Hey, this is Par64 Guy. Today I'm going to be covering some basic maintenance on an electric hot water heater. One of the things that hot water heaters need on typically an annual basis or more often if you have hard water is a flush. So what does that mean? That means we're going to actually drain some of the water from the tank to try and move any sediment that has built up in the bottom of the tank out of it. That way it'll help lengthen the life of the appliance. Now, some older tanks, I've read that you may not want to do a flush on them if it's say six or seven years old, um, because any sediment that has built up could actually be um, impacting the tank. And if you disrupt it, you could actually shorten the time before it fails and springs a leak. So use your own judgment. If you do have an older tank, I actually have an older tank in my house, which I don't believe was ever flushed. Uh, I'm opting not to do it. It's coming up on 10 years old. I may just wait. And then when I do have to replace it and get a new one, I'll, I'll do the annual flushing on it. Standard electric water heaters use heating elements like this to transfer thermal energy to the water in the tank. Hybrid electric water heaters like this one use a combination of standard electric elements and a heat pump similar to what is used in some home heating and air conditioning systems. Air circulates through the heat exchanger where it is cooled before exiting the appliance. The heat is transferred from the air into a tubing system containing refrigerant, which then transfers the heat to the water in the tank. It's a slower process, but it's been found to use a lot less electricity to do it. And the user of this hot water heater noticed her electric bill over the past 12 months has gone down significantly. This unit replaced an old 50 gallon, uh, all electric. And she did notice that the hybrid has reduced the uh, power consumption uh, electric bill quite a bit. So getting familiar with our installation, we'll start with the water supply valves. Uh, at minimum, you should have a valve on the cold water supply line so you can shut off water to the hot water heater. You have your power coming in. This is a heat pump model, so we have a control panel. Any type of heat pump typically contains a way of draining off water which condenses out of the air as it is cooled. Here you see the condensate line exiting the water heater where it should drain into a floor drain or outdoors. This unit is currently draining into a bucket since the exterior line has not yet been installed. All hot water heaters contain a pressure relief valve. Since the pressure of the water increases as it is heated, a fault in the process could result in pressures high enough to cause the heater to explode. To prevent that, this valve will open to allow that pressure to escape, thus avoiding a dangerous situation. These valves require occasional flushing as well to ensure they are operating properly. Lastly, this is the water drain valve. Some heaters will have an actual handled valve like a hose spigot, while others like this simply have the valve body. The valves are typically designed to accept a standard garden hose. So for this project, we need a garden hose, a bucket, a screwdriver if the drain valve does not have a handle already. And what's been suggested by the Ream website is either some nylon stocking or in my case, I just used a cotton shirt. You'll see why later. So the first thing we want to do is turn off the hot water heater. In this case, we're going to put it into off. Next, locate the breaker for the hot water heater in the breaker panel and turn it off. The next thing we need to do is turn off the cold water supply. How do we know which one that is? There's a couple ways to tell. First, you can actually touch the pipes and you can feel one of them is cold, one of them is warm. Another is on the unit itself. The outlet should be labeled. And that way you know which one it is and you just follow it up. So we'll just gently grab the valve and turn it off. Open a hot water faucet to relieve the pressure in the system. Connect the hose to the drain outlet. Run the hose either outside or to a floor drain, shower, or even toilet if need be. Make sure the output of the hose is low enough to promote drainage. Reem's YouTube video suggested fitting the end of the hose with a nylon stocking to catch any sediment in order to gauge how much is present. 
I didn't have one, so I opted for a cotton shirt. Now open the drain valve. Use caution as the water could be hot enough to scald you. After a few gallons of water have drained out, close the valve. Okay, remove the hose connection. You may want to have a towel just in case it... Oh, actually good. Okay. Now, if you have an older unit and this is dripping a little bit, you can try close, opening and retightening this. Um, worse comes to worse. If this valve has started to go and it's not sealing well, uh, you can buy a small cap that will screw onto this and close it off. Okay, next we'll turn the water back on. The valve is still open in the faucet, so the water's going to start running. You'll hear it. As the unit fills back up, now we'll go check the faucet upstairs. Once the water is flowing out of the faucet solid again, you turn it off. Get a bucket under the tube here. Now remember, this water could be hot enough to scald you, so do not come in contact with the water. To flush the relief valve, I used a shorter bucket to catch the water and dumped it into a second larger bucket to make things a little easier for me. Flush a few gallons of water to ensure the valve is clear of any sediment and operating properly. Yeah, I made a little bit of a mess, but not too bad. Looking at the shirt, I'm not seeing any sediment deposits. That may just mean that the water here doesn't really have any significant mineral content. Either way, an annual flush wouldn't hurt. With the tank refilled, go ahead and turn power back on. And if you have a hybrid, go ahead and turn it back on. And you can see here that the temperature is low because we've got some fresh water in there. It wasn't on. And so now this will start heating the water back up. And so that's it for this video. Hopefully you got a little bit out of it and see that there's more things at your uh, home that you might be able to take care of yourself without having to worry about a professional. Once again though, know your limits. If you're not sure, not comfortable, especially when it comes to the hot water heaters, you don't know the age, you're not sure if you're gonna spring a leak or if something else might happen, definitely call in the professionals so that way you're ready to go just in case something happens. But something like this, especially with a newer unit, I felt comfortable enough doing this. So I did it myself and shared it with you. So thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button over there and let me know in the comments what you think or if you have ideas for other projects you'd like to see me do. Once again, this is Part 64 Guy. See you later.